आयन इन साथ इतना और फार मंत्र ओम ह्रीं नमो आरहंता concept of ashram and samvar ashram means the coming in of the karma and samvar means stopping it so before we take on this we will just recite the first of the verses of it do you remember muni shrote hai dharma ka atma ki pehchan ek hi sadhe sab sadhe yahi param vigyan मैं हूँ मैं है भेद पर जब जाता है ज्ञान संभव बनती है तभी आत्मा की पहचान सो इट्स ट्राइंग टू टेल अ वेरी सिंपल थिंग दैट देर इज टू थिंग्स आई एम एंड विद दैट आई एम वी हैव डिफरेंट लेबल्स अटैच टू इट दैट आई एम अ मदर सन स्टूडेंट I have a profession. I'm a doctor. All different kinds of labels. But if you remove all these labels, then it is just I exist. So the moment we have an experience, if the moment we have a realization that there is a difference between all the external labels, which are ultimately temporary, it's never permanent label. So dropping those temporary labels and identifying ourselves that I am ultimately a pure, happy soul. that is the essence of spirituality so if you've got that you don't have to come to the next sunday session <laughs> <laughs> so in that in this journey of exploring that and experiencing that he comes up with ashram and samvar and then we discuss that and then we are moving forward with the concept of nirjara what is nirjara sharing of the karmas so we all uh, have different days where we do cleaning right mm. someone chooses a specific day that thursday is my day of cleaning so when you choose a day of cleaning why is it needed because all the rest of the days it is yeah you're piling up stuff and there needs to be a day where you remove it so here 
the piling up of stuff is ashram where we bring in all different kinds of karmas if we don't take the word even karma we, we pile up different kinds of emotions moods experiences we have we are tired we have body pain all that stuff is there it could be mental level it could be physical level and it could be emotional level and as we pile up this, there is a day we say, no, we have to do yoga or go for gym because my body is kind of getting too stiff. Why? We piled up, now we want to remove it. You want to meditate because you want to clear up your mind. So there is a constant process of income, incoming stuff, incoming energies, and there is an effort to remove them. Now, in the same thing is here in spirituality, we are constantly piling different kinds of karmas. We, it is trying to use the word karma instead of saying emotion. It does say emotion as well, but the ultimate term is karma, basically. Ultimately, what are you trying to do? Clean up the dust. Right? So, whether you put the clothes to your laundry stuff or you do... Um, like um, vacuum or whatever, right? What are we trying to remove? The dust particles. So ultimately, what are we trying to remove in context of our soul? It is the karma, the karmic energy. And most important thing we need to understand here is, when we say that there is a piling up of stuff, we bring in karmic energy or we bring in emotions or we bring in different kinds of thoughts, there is an entry. And then we clean up, there is an exit. My question is, is the door of entry and exit the same? In this hall, you enter to the same door and you might be allowed to go out of the same door, right? What about in spirituality? Is it the same door you enter and exit? No. No? Because you can have entry as well as exit happening at the same time. Good. <laughs> you reach the <laughs> Yeah, basically... Uh, there is a yes and no answer, but it's all different perspectives. First thing is, the answer is yes. The same door could be the door of entry and the same door is the door of exit in the sense, action is a means of piling up karma, action is a means of getting rid of it. So, it is, is the action which is bringing in any karma. Now, when you say karma, it, it need not always be bad stuff. Mm -hmm. It could be good karma, like punya, for example. We all want punya, right? No. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're saying this. Both answers there. <laughs> you shouldn't aspire for punya, basically. You shouldn't think, oh, I need it. Because the moment you need it, there is a desire, and the desire puts you back into the cycle of samsara. So if you if you're looking forward for good happy sansara life, right? Like the even good uh, social life, punya is one which puts you into uh, gives you good uh, comfort and stuff. For example, it was your good pun like it was your punya which made you come through all this journey of um, being in London or studying here, or whatever you're doing. So there is a baggage of punya which does help us in our journey, but that is not the ultimate because ultimately you have to drop that. To grow higher. Even the exit of punya is needed basically. Make, making sense, right? So when we're talking about entry and exit, the door is the same, which means action is the key to anything. The binding of the karma, it is action. Shedding of the karma, it is action. Why? Because the moment the soul performs an act, the, the soul is shaking. It's not in the state of stillness. The moment it drops its stillness, it, it pulls in, attracts karma and it also sheds. For example, if there is dust on this, you kind of, um, you know, you open up it and uh, shed the, you, you kind of flip it, the kar karmas are dropped. I mean, the particles are dropped, the dust is dropped. Similarly, what we do is we perform an act. For example, you do the mantra session, you, you do uh, any mantra which you have faith in, you, you repeat that. By repeating the mantra, what are you trying to do? Isn't it an action? It is an action. You're constantly saying something. By saying some mantra, om or arham or whatever, how can you get rid of karma? It's very simple. The energy which we produce actually reaches to the subtle level of the soul and cleans up the stuff. Nowadays, we have different kinds of cleaning technology, right? Cleaning through air, cleaning through sound. Different kinds of stuff is there. There is a, a whole 
I mean, initially we thought, okay, water is needed to clean, but now there is air cleaning system in instrument as well. So similarly here, the energy which we produce through the sound or mantra, it reaches the subtle level and tries to clean up. So the action which we did of mantra session, there is a person who's going for gossip and chatting. I mean, that is an action. That is an action which is involved with something social. Now, what is the difference between saying arham as a mantra and this action which is gossip? Just both verbal speech. Why is it so different? Why is why are we making a claim oh, that one thing would lead you to liberation and the other thing will lead you to samsara? The waves, the energy levels, which are different. Yeah, the energy which goes behind it is different. The intention which behind it is different. The the emotion which goes behind it with it is different. So when we are in the state of mantra session, we have an awareness of our pure state, we have a, an aspiration to purify our soul. The intention is different, the focus is different. But when there is a gossip, where is the awareness gone? Uh, do we have the awareness towards ourselves, what we are doing? <coughs> we are in the state of delusion or in a, in a slumber state in a way, we are not conscious of what we are doing. So yeah. you need consciousness. So for example, if there's a linguistic, someone who's studying languages and he just says arham, arham, mm -hmm. that, will, that will not shed karma for him. So you need to have faith. If you just recite a mantra by mm -hmm. without any... Suppose a person, uh, the word arham for us is arhat bhagwan. Yeah. In mm -hmm. some other tradition, the word arham is not arhat bhagwan. It could be just kind of a bad word, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Then how does it work? Yeah, so the, the kind of emotion and the energy, with the the fake, it goes behind it, does work. For example, for us, we are using the word arham for uh, the representation of an enlightened soul. Some other tradition doesn't use the word arham, they use the word buddha. Now they recite buddha instead of arham. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it help them? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it is not just, of course the word has power. Because every letter, every sound has its own power. Even if you repeat the word letter A, mm -hmm. A, as a mantra, it has its impact. I was reading yes, a few days back that uh, for eye purpose, if there is uh, some problem in the eyes, the in Hindi alphabets we have e, e, like you know, two letters of E, small and big. Mm -hmm. So that is a mantra which you could use for helping yourself with the healing your eyes. So every letter in itself has power and that that is there basically. But other than what we are trying to say is when we see use the word and the word for um, like you know a um, couple of days back I had a story mentioned where there was a mom who had no ability to study. Then the guru said, okay, um, the, the disciple said to the guru, I cannot do read many scriptures and it's the long journey of studying is difficult for me. Why don't you just give me two words and I'll, I'll like pick those two words and go with it. The more the, the guru gives him the two words, but the moment he's on the road, like he's traveling, he forgets it. He's worried now that I just had two words of lessons even that I forgot, he keeps walking, he walks to the field of um, rice fields and he hears two words there. He picks those two words from that and he kind of thinks, oh, these were the two words which the Guru said. Was it the same? Actually, no. And there, but the meaning which he has behind that two words is so powerful. By the end of the journey, he's enlightened. He has cable again. Was Kevalyan so far? He was a, he was a dumb student, could not grab even two words of lessons, and full enlightenment is there with him. So here we see that the words are there, which is different words, but the meaning which he puts into it. What was the meaning he added to the two words? The first word he um, mastos he says, which means the husk is different and the grain is different. The body is different and my soul is different. 
Just with that contemplation behind these two words that I am a soul and not the body, he is traveling all the way to the journey of enlightenment. So the intention, the, the, the energy, the emotion, everything matters. What kind of feeling you add to it. Many years we've been doing Naukar Mantras, Mara, right? From childhood. But people say that if you do recite a mantra for like, for example, 20,000 times or 1 lakh times or whatever, you, you recharge the mantra and it becomes yours and it becomes very powerful. Do we all experience that the fact that way? No. You say, okay, I've spent 40 years doing it. That, that mantra is not charged. And there is there are people who just do three years of sadhana of Nakar Mantra and they are they do miraculous things with Nakar Mantra or Maktamar and stuff. What is the reason behind it? The way you put yourself into the mantra chanting, you disconnect yourself from the world, you become one with that energy. Even for three minutes you do a mantra with full concentration, no distraction, and you, you feel that you are the mantra. That power that mantra is a part of you. And you see miraculous change. So the the engrossment, that involvement which we have, should be at that level and not superficial. It is just repeating the verbal in, verbal recitation. And that's the reason when a, we say that if a person is doing some like or mantra session or meditation, whatever, there is a concept of chattanvariya, which means the first person. And the last person, the difference between two people, same act. We are all doing the same uh, mantra session or samai for meditation. But the difference of purification which comes about in these two people would be infinite, infinite times differently. One could be at the level one and the other could be at the extreme end of the level of going to the same journey. So... Externally, we are all, for example, we are all Samani, externally we are all Shravak and Shravika, but internally, one Shravak and the other might have, it's not like how many hours of volunteer service you have done, or what you have put into it, but internally, how well you get engrossed with what you are doing, with that greater degree of devotion, that brings a big change or shift within us, basically. So that, that uh, even for doing spirituality, we need energy and strength. It's not like, um, so we are tired, so let us just do it now. That needs energy as well. I mean, of course, it gives us energy. And if you, if you chant the mantra that night, probably <coughs> you wake up early, very fresh. It's, you're not feeling more tired like you would be doing otherwise and stuff. It, it, it has power, but it itself needs power. Uh, and investment in it as well. So here the intention, the emotion which goes behind it makes the ashram or the nidra a big difference. We, we see different kinds of examples, like soldiers going to war, right? It's a very tough journey for them. They are uh, having hardships, they stay hungry, they are being shot, they are bleeding, there is death in front of them. So with that state, how much karma are they shedding basically? So I give you one example of an extreme soldier, right? And there is a Jain who is trying to fast for a month and stay without food or for eight days or whatever. Both of them are putting food. Both of them are going hungry. What's the difference between the nature of this person and that person? Intention. Intention. Yeah, so the whole idea is why are you performing that act? There the person is doing for the country and the, the whole uh, thing is they want to make sure that the enemy whom they consider is an external person or a country should not attack them. But here we are conscious of our inner enemies that our attachment, our emotions should not be overpowered. So the, the focus is very different. You are there in your office and don't eat from morning till evening. You're literally hungry. But if you've not taken the badha or fiyag or vam, it doesn't come up into spiritual thing. Yeah. But 
One thing we have to here know is that there is two kinds of nirjala. The pain which one goes through by natural fasting or for example a person goes for mountaineering, right? And there is a monk who walks on the mountains. There is a difference. There is a monk whose lifestyle is dedicated to ahimsa and for that he chooses for walking. The mountaineering person is choosing for fun. So here we see that the purpose, the intention behind the act is big difference. And what makes the difference in the spiritual world here is that there are two kinds of nirjra, sakam nirjra and akam nirjra. Sakam means with the aspiration of liberation. Akam means without the goal of liberation. You say, okay, if I do this mantra, let my business grow. You're doing the mantra, you're doing arham, right? If you're doing arham, we, we, we should make a claim, right? That 100% guaranteed you'll get something out of it. But then my intention is, let me have more clients, let my business grow, or whatever. Like this uh, problem of house get resolved. So when we go for a spiritual act as well, but with the social purpose, there it is a calm nirjana which means the, the, there is shedding of karma because you are fasting. It is proper three days fasting, uh, historical, uh, this thing we have, different kinds of stories. So there is a story where um, probably Krishna or um, they fasted to invoke the deity. And the deity comes and fulfills their desire. So there is a proper fast, a three days fasting, no food, no water, three days meditation. And the deity comes. So if the deity came, there must be some power in the fast. But what was the intention? The intention was something social. So here, the act is spiritual, but the social purpose is a calm nirjra. So here, there will be shedding of karma. But the cleaning would not be a deep cleaning. It would be mild cleaning. Right? Whereas the same person doing three days fast for spiritual upliftment, the same time invested would be a deep cleaning within us. So when we do any different kinds of mantras, there is a person who has health issues. And we say, okay, do this mantra and it's going to help you with your health. What are we trying to do? Is it a social act or a spiritual act? Social. No. The intention, what, are, what is your target, will actually define it as social or spiritual. When Samniji is giving a mantra to someone for health purpose, why, why should Samniji give for a social thing, right? <laughs> so the thing is, if generally we have to be very clear in this, it's just a very vague line. We say, okay, do this mantra. This mantra will try to heal your karmic baggage because ultimately karma is the cause of problem. So as long as this karmic baggage is there, the problem will be there. So try to heal your karma to heal your health and health issue. So the, though it is indirect there, but what is our key target? To clean up the karmic baggage, to deal with your spiritual aspect of yourself. So the, the intention, the, the clarity when we do any act, simple or big or small, should be very... Um, like, you know, you should be very clear on it. Don't mix things. Like, you know, uh, khichdi, just say in India, we, we prepare khichdi and people enjoy khichdi. But in spirituality, khichdi is not okay. Mm -hmm. So here, the akam nirjra is any act. For example, a person did fasting because, you know, like they got appreciation from others or people saw that people appreciate others if they do fasting and let me try to do it as well and you enjoy appreciation. Fasting is spirituality, but what was the intention? Appreciation. Yes. How does it work? So if a butcher came to you and said, I've got very bad health, and you give the mantra to the butcher, and he gets better, but you know that he's involved in, in killing lots of animals because he's a butcher, mm -hmm. and whereas someone else came to you and said, give me a mantra. So is that what you're talking about, that the intention, that you, because by having better health, and I'm getting rid of my karma, but is it the action afterwards that... If I get better health, then I want to spend more time doing spirituality rather than in bad activities. So the point here is, um, if I give a mantra to you or the butcher or anyone, does it make a big difference? 
I'll tell you why. Um, so this is a little complicated, but we'll, well, we'll try to make it simple. When we have two categories of lifestyle, right? Sadhus and lay people. The ascetics are dedicated completely to non-violence. What about the shavaks? Partial. So if I give you a mantra, forget about the butcher case, it gets too, too kind of uh, violent example. <laughs> if I give you a mantra, you would get into better health and then what is your lifestyle? Partially non-violence, mm -hmm. partially violence. So isn't violence a part of your life as well? Mm -hmm. Butcher it is an extreme violence, mm -hmm. but violence is a part of your life as well, mm -hmm. right? So by giving you the mantra, am I looking forward for your longer health? No. Am I looking forward for your um, social life? No. My only purpose is to help you keep um, manage your karmic baggage which you are facing through getting you strength so you because if there is cancer people get into depression and then there is more loop like cycle of karma there's already a karma attacking you because of your negative moods because of the disease you're pulling in more negative karma so here spirituality gives you strength at least don't pull in more karma while you're going through this surgery or stuff have strength, be in peace. What do we say? Like, okay, it's okay. Don't worry about what's going to happen after the surgery. The doctor has to take care of the body. It's not you. So why do you worry about what's going to happen, whether the surgery will go right or wrong? What are we trying to do is try to motivate the person to not go into moha or emotion or like stress. That negative emotion, the negative stressful thing will pull in more karma. So try to keep your mind spiritually positive so that you avoid incoming karma, avoid the more ashram. So this is really important that we, when we are performing any act, because I said the door is the same. So the door for coming in and walking out is action. But the action, what kind of action is, are we performing with the intention, the, the goal, the target, makes a big difference on what's happening. So imagine two people doing tela, three days fast or a tie or whatever thing. But the purpose behind that spiritual act would make a big difference of whether it is Sakam Nirja or a Kam Nirja. A Sakam Nirja is with the aspiration of liberation. So it would be innumerable times more, the purification would be innumerable times more if our purpose is very clear and targeted towards purification of the soul. Last week you raised an example of this uh, individual who released someone from prison and mm. killed seven people. And there I got the impression that that was not a good act. Mm. But today you're saying that actually even giving the butcher is uh, health. No, okay. So let me again clarify this. Mm. Good, you brought that example back. The context was different. When I give an example, it is with that context, right? So the context in my previous session was that there is a person who is doing a social help. A person helping a person to come bring out of the uh, um, jail is a social service to one person, right? And anyone who is in the society, helping the other person in the society, leads a life either of minor or major violent act, right? I mean, there the person was a criminal and he shot many more people. But even if a person is not a criminal, a person lives in the society, lives with non-violence, but still with violence, right? It's not like complete non-violence. Violence is a part of a social being. So there, any service towards a, a social being for their social life is not spiritual. Am I making sense? When I'm giving a mantra, it is not for kind of uh, life. It is just to get rid of the karmic baggage, purify the soul. The problem which the karma would uh, is causing, the problem which the person is going to that emotional baggage. For example, a student is in uh, going to an exam and is very stressful, right? And once a student uh, finishes the exam, he is going to be a lawyer and he would deal many kinds of cases. And the case lawyer could do all different kinds of things, right? 
and when the student comes to us that I'm very stressful and I need peace and uh, how do so I probably if I give them meditation session or any mantra to bring them into peace my intention is not to help the law uh, the legal part of his life basically my intention is to help him get rid of that uh, clutch of emotional baggage which he's got um, hooked up into help the student not be stressful not bind more karma because any stress the person would bind more karma might take a negative act step or be in trouble or put himself into trouble so the key thing is my purpose is to help him get rid of that uh, emotional stuff so the intention behind the act is is very important did i answer your question or it's not so clear no i think what you're saying is last week the intention was not the same as said samiji has in giving yeah there the intention was that if i give charity or if i help someone yeah. it is a social help it wasn't like if he had to really help the for the the uh, the criminal he would take him to a, a counselor and help give him counseling to make sure that he gets rid of this uh, criminal tendencies and change his mind and change his heart so if that was an effort by the 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 man he was surely trying to help someone transform shift to a spiritual level but that wasn't the case it's the classic case of teach a man to fish rather than give him a fish sorry there is a saying that teach a man to fish and he will live when ah. you give him a fish he'll just be yeah. alive so it, basically if we if our intention is to transform a person when we say okay don't worry you do your best but don't take the stress of the results so don't attach yourself that i i should um, i mean the moment you attach to this is the university i have to go yes you look forward for the best but then whatever comes be positive to it so don't tell me it might be a slight digression but when you say that when satu sadvis have taken a vow of complete non violence and shravaks and shravikas are partial but if you look at satu sadvis they still eat they still walk like if you look at ahimsa yatra so they they're still doing lots of these activities is it just the intention which makes it non violence rather than actual non violence because by walking by eating by doing all the other activities which shravaks are doing there's still some violence so how what is the term by total non violence okay now very uh, important here is to be very clear the attempt of an ascetic is to practice complete non violence like the commitment to what degree they are able to practice it is again it could be like sometimes it's 80% sometimes 90% for some it is 100% like the acheshi mahashaman ji no matter how much heat it is it is suffocating no matter what the situation is the fan cannot be on in his where he is seated if it is the fan is on he will not even walk into that area so i mean for me it might, might not be that disciplined i am like okay it's too heat hot and in india we don't use like we don't switch on the light or things like that but uh, there are other people who, who does that like for example there are people walking in and out of the room they need the but for acheshi no matter how many people are walking in walking out because every person who comes to acheshi like there acheshi he meet he takes the darshan and blessings of acheshi not even for any purpose like many arguments were done but he didn't change his mind no when i sit fan cannot be on that 100% commitment i again it's not there in all but the fact is when they are walking why are they walking purpose the purpose is first thing i don't use transportation because there is violence involved in it very simple you didn't even use uh, like you was advised that you know if you could uh, fly out from your party with girls yeah and he decided to stay in the army camp yeah like when there was a uh, nepal earthquake right he was in the uh, central place where there was a peak earthquake attack i mean hit sorry and uh, there are many uh, letters came to him many people lay people shravak sadhus and sadhis also said that it's an extreme case so it's okay for us to i mean there is a price sheet so there is a price sheet we can do price sheet and we can 
traveled through air and reached to a safer place. But he was strong. He, he said, no, no matter what, we will be here. And he went through the journey and he, he traveled all the rest of his journey. And the people there actually said that because you were here, it gave us strength because it was not easy for the people, local people as well. And uh, luckily, it, the Jain community there did not have um, like a major calamity, like no death of a Jain, uh, because it was such a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. Even when the um, earthquake hit, we had, uh, Cheshi had a program, a joint program with um, the yoga person, what's his name? Ram Dev Baba. So there was a joint big program with Ram Dev Baba. They all had just finished the program and people had started walking out of the sermon hall. And it was lucky enough that it was just a time between like walking in and out uh, and people were on the main ground stuff and the whole pandal, you know, it's huge pandal, thousands of people sitting, it collapsed and uh, it, people survived even that major calamity. So the, the intention behind walking is first thing that we don't choose violent means of transportation. The second thing is that commitment that I should practice non-violence to a greater degree. When people, the sadhus and sadhus are constantly walking, they're walking for the purpose of detachment as well. That we don't stay in a place, we are not hooking up ourselves to a place, to a property, to, you know, ident like we, we identify ourselves as Britishers, for example, living here. So you have your own identity, you have an identity ego thing, that you know what we are, even like for example, we, are, we get egoistic about being Jains, for example. So not to carry those identities, those baggages of ego or any layers, and not hooking up to that is, is a part of that life. And when we say it's the going for arms, for example, right? They get food, it might be hot, cold, what they like, they don't like, different kinds of things are there. But to go through that, so the whole journey, there's a purpose is to go to these, those old villages, reach to those people, like there are different stories which come up. Um, there was a person who was driving the truck and uh, he, he came to Acheshi and Acheshi said, do you drink? He said, well, I wouldn't lie, but I do. And Acheshi said, can you quit? And he said, because you've said I'll try. So there are many incidents where they try to motivate the local people because the area which they traveled was uh, the tea uh, gardens and different other places where there was uh, these kind of stuff. So the, tr the purpose is to transform others and to practice and transform oneself and practice the life of non-violence. So that commitment is a key there. But again, like walking, if I'm talking, sometimes I start, if I'm, talk, I'm walking with someone whom I am very close to. Uh, I might talk and walk, right? So it's not good. Acheshi does motivate that. Try to keep complete silence, like you know, take the bhadha of mourn while you walk, so that you're very cautious of every step you're taking. If you're driving, you might crash some bug or animal, or big or small. But here, walking, you take care. You're not walking on the grass, not walking on like any kind of moss and stuff. So that awareness that I am not, I don't want to indulge in any kind of simple or big or small violence. That, that awareness is there. And that makes a big difference, I think. So there is an action, they are eating. But the purpose is that let me practice spirituality well enough by serving this body. In, in scriptures we say that as long as the body helps you practice spirituality, serve it. The moment you find it that no more meditation is possible through this, then you can start doing Sankhara and Salikna. So even that Sankhara and Salikna is, an, is a method to detach from your old garb of the body when it is ready to be left behind. So you see that the, the degree of non-violence which one commits for could be again different. A person says, oh, I'm not going to eat meat no matter what, whether I'm in a conference where there's nothing else, still I keep up my commitment. That that conviction that yes, I practice this. So that is at least for a student that that is kind of minimum line they've drawn. For others, it could be a higher degree. I wouldn't eat Jamaican. Some would say for the, go for that. So there are different degrees. Again, eating and not eating is an external tap. When we talk about meals, there are two kinds of tap: Bhakti and Abhyantar. 
by he is for example if i fast you all know that i fasted right and then you come and ask sata sata hai sammi ji is it okay sata but for example i i went through something like i didn't like something but i i was very peaceful i didn't like the weather for example and i i stayed in peace that is again a tap no matter what the situation was i was trying to stay peaceful that is a tap but we don't really look uh, we don't really um, get more interested into the internal tap basically for example meditation is an internal tap if you're sitting with your eyes closed we know externally you're meditating but internally you might be thinking of your job who knows we were there i mean i was there at uh, in america i mean i used to have uh, meditation sessions basically we did a research there uh, on students and we wanted to analyze how the impact of preksha meditation is on the students and we had different parameters which we had to analyze now we we would recruit students students would come there would be some who would all will be seated with their eyes closed except one or two who we have to say them okay you have to keep your eyes closed but they just said thing now who knows whether they are meditating or not and the thing was in the research they would get a gift so they've come there for a gift or for the meditation experience we don't know they come there and they're meditating or not we don't know so it's an internal thing which we it's hard to say of course majority of the students were good ones like you know we are lucky enough but there were some who could literally see that nothing is going on here <laughs> not even humming sound for example so so basically there are two kinds of nidra internal and uh, external bahya tap is upvas anshan nodari like diksha jata hai we go for arms it's visible you eat less than uh, do you do ekashno you do i am girl you do different kinds of anushtan so all this is visible to us but when it comes to internal tap it is for example swadhyaya you read a scripture you could literally you're reading externally as well but internally to what level you're grabbing it you all read the same book you all read that i am a soul right but to what level do i feel that sentence in myself if we all go for us a, a feeling that i should not be angry and i i should forgive but to what level do i go and practice this forgiveness so that is a very deeper level of ourself and how sometimes we might also not really get the truth of it we think we have forgotten something we have forgiven someone but there might be something which still goes on the student uh, we did a meditation session after the session she came and she said that there was something in my life which i thought i had let it gone or i forgotten but in the meditation session she literally cried in the whole session of meditation she was with tears i mean not like with sound but the and i could see it so she said um i had those feelings something had happened and that came up but the best part was in the session it was it it was relieved it, it went out so there are things which we at the subtle level might have like you know childhood things we see certain traits in a older person because in their childhood they had those kind of things and we're not able to let go those experiences those traits those feelings and any moment which comes now we are still the same child if you if you look at um, a little deeply you will find that every person has something from their childhood which makes that person as a child even now because we are not able to clean up our old baggage so it's it's important that we do this cleaning up this is nirjra and um, in my next session i will talk a little more about this nirjra this bahya and abhyantar to see that there is simple thing like prayashit right what is prayashit why do we do it how we do it and how it can make a big difference whether doing it but still it's not doing it and i'll give you examples about that and uh, we'll explore that so here um, acharya's um, verses samvar shuddha swarup ko pa 